through the poor wire. Okay. Hi everyone, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet. We are on our number six and final tutorial for our crochet fall wreath um, tutorials. And um, today we're going to go ahead and assemble our wreath. Wreath? <laughs> Not wreath. <laughs> we're going to assemble our wreath. I'm going to show you how to get it all together. But I do want to remind you to enter the giveaway. Today is the last day to enter the giveaway. Um, all you need to do is like and share this video. Um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Put in the comments that you did all three. Just put did all three. And then you're entered in the giveaway for my fall um, scarf with the, the uh, flower appliques on it. So let's go ahead and get started. I've been having some trouble with my internet. Oops, sorry. And so um, I'm really hoping that this is streaming okay. So if you're on or you're watching, please say hi. Hi. And um, let's go ahead and I'm going to tell you what materials you're going to need today. Of course, first of all, you're going to need... Um, all the stuff that we've made. <laughs> You're going to need your leaves and your mums and your sunflowers and your pumpkins and just all the projects that we've been working on the last two weeks that have built up to today. Okay, and what you're really going to need to make the wreath is you're going to need two styrofoam plates, just like this. You're going to need um, plastic bags, just like plastic grocery bags, just like this. You're going to need, um, or you can use newspaper if your wreath is going to be inside. Um, you're going to need scissors. You're going to need some kind of pencil or pen. You're going to need an X-Acto knife. Um, you can use scissors to cut these, but I think this, this works better. Um, so, yeah. Um, then you're also going to need tape. I was just a... You're gonna need tape. I would suggest, um, I would suggest uh, packing tape um, or some kind of tape like that. Um, and then I would, um, then you're gonna need something round for your paper plate to cut it out with. And I'm using this um, as my um, as my traceable for the inside of my paper plate that I'm gonna cut out. So yeah, that's what you're gonna need today. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do this wreath okay so what you're going to need to do first and I'm going to raise up my camera a little bit so you can see better um, and uh, try to show you here it's a little bit different than when I crochet so what I want you to do is you've got your two foam plates like this you do need some pretty good size one these are hefty um, um, like Anyways, I'm going to lay right in the middle here. I'm going to try to find right in the middle. And I'm going to go right underneath the plate. Because you do want a decent sized lip of the plastic plate left. So you're going to do just like that. Then you're going to do the same thing on your other plate. Okay. So you've got your plates lined up. Now you're going to take your X-Acto knife and you're going to make sure that you're on a surface that you can use this on. I'm using my quilting um, thing, so um, I know that it'll be okay on here because this is what I actually use to cut squares for my quilts. So, um, but yeah, be careful um, what surface you use this on. Okay, so I'm going to go right around my red. I'm not going to go right on the red, but I'm going to go around it. Because like I said, you do want a decent size lip because you're going to pack it with your bla plastic bags. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, again, I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Just going around. On the right on the outside of my red line. Okay, just like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to turn this upside down and put it right on top, just like this, okay? Then I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to cut me off some pieces here 
And again, I'm using packing tape because I think it's going to be a little strong for me. I wouldn't want to use uh, like regular scotch tape. I don't think it'll hold very well. Hold on, let me lower my camera again because I'm in a different position now. So I'm just going to go down a little bit with my camera so that I can show you up close what we're doing. Yeah, I try to stay away from, you know, kind of cheap tape. I think duct tape would work. Um, I had said in my other one, maybe don't use, in my other video when I was talking about this, maybe don't use duct tape. Um, because it does show, but after you put the yarn on, I really think it might be okay. So just on a couple sides here, just on a couple sides, we're going to tape these plates together. Okay. So... And I'm really trying with this camera to show you what's going on here, but I've got to be able to see it too. So anyway, we're just going around to the sides of our paper plate and we're just taping them together basically, just like that. Okay, so I think that's enough for right now. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plastic bags and yay, if you're into recycling, what a way to use these plastic bags. I try not to get them. Um, sometimes I use other things, but it just happens. So I use them for all kinds of stuff um, to repurpose for them. But um, we're going to put them right in here. And if you see little places coming undone as you're packing your plastic bags in, um, you want to tape those. So let me get me some tape. My daughter is with me from college. Yay! So, there we go. She can hold the tape for me and some tape. But yeah, if you see some little places coming undone while you're packing your bags in, just put some tape there. But yeah, so I'm just going to keep putting bags in the middle here to fill in the hole. And I don't even know how many I'm using. I think maybe probably about four or five, maybe six bags you'll need. It doesn't matter if they poke out a little bit. Um, like I said, this is going to be covered in yarn. Okay, so we've got our bags in here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take long pieces of tape. I'm going to tape this side down really quick. You're going to need longer pieces because you're going to tape down the plastic bags around. So, um, so we're going to take the tape and we're just going to lay it over the top just like this, just like that. And thank goodness for my trusty assistant today. Um, but yeah, we're just going to do this all along. You don't have to do every, you know, I'm going to move over a little bit and um, get this side over here. Um, you don't have to go, you know, all the way around. I mean, unless you want to. Um, but I'm just going to move a couple spaces over and just, you know, until I think it looks pretty good. And then just like that. All the way around okay and I need one more piece this tape came up just a little bit si, senor. <laughs> okay okay all right so thank you for watching the giveaway but yeah so as you can see sometimes it does get a little crazy like that tape stuck to the other tape and I don't even know what's happening there, but so I'm going to get another piece of tape and I'm going to lay it down. You know, we only have so much tape. <laughs> the world is not made of tape. So I'm just going to take that piece right there and make sure it works okay, just like that. Okay. And that's what it looks like. Okay. Kinda looks so you've fresh. just made, yeah, it doesn't look too good right now, but it will look good. Okay. So now what you're going to do is 
Um, after doing this wreath, I would really suggest that you get some chunky yarn. Um, I decided to use some cheaper yarn that I had because I didn't want to waste any good, good yarn um, to do the wreath. Um, so what I did was I just used regular... You know, heart yarn and brown whatever it is, and um, and I took you know one piece off the end and one piece off the middle to double it up, okay? Um, because what you're going to do now is you're going to wrap this yarn all around the paper plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pieces of yarn. But now, if you have bulky yarn, you're not going to need to double your yarn. Um, and I would suggest bulky yarn if you have it. If you don't and you have you know the time and you don't care, then this is fine too. So, um, but you do, does require a little patience. So, um, so I'm going to put this, I'm going to tape these two pieces of yarn right here on the back. And then what you're going to do is, is you're going to, you're going to take your yarn and you're just going to put your, and, and a smaller ball would be better too, but you're just going to put this right through the middle. Okay. Just like this. And arrange it as you go. And just go around, just go around, I'm sorry I'm buffering, you're just going to go around the entire paper plate just doing this over and over again. I think it took, my daughter did my other one for me, I think it took her about what, maybe 30 minutes to do it, um, and she just was listening to music and chilling out with her phone while she did it for me. Um, but yeah, you just go all the way around, and as you're going... You know, push your yarn together so you don't see anything. You can go over it as many times as you want to make it look as good as you want or as thick as you want it to be. But yeah, you just keep going around and around and around just like that. And then you would go till you got to your end. And when you got to your end, I would suggest maybe putting a little piece of um, yarn, a colored yarn here, just like... Um, tucking it in so you know where you started and then when you come back around you're going to find where you hate that yarn at, and you're just going to tape it right right back in there and then you can um, adjust a little loop and then you'll have a loop to hang it on but that's what you're going to do you're just going to keep going around and around until you cover the entire foam plate okay now what I did is I went ahead and started one and this is what it looks like let me raise this up a little bit um, let me try to raise it up but that's what it looks like so far I'm working on it right now um, but as you can see it's, so pretty. it's really pretty so I've still got some stuff that left to do to it I went ahead and sewed some pieces on and I'm going to show you how to sew on a couple more pieces so that we can finish this project up um, we've got our daisy we've got some leaves we've got our sunflower some mum some more leaves and um, that's what it looks like okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how um, I'm sorry I'm moving my camera around so much, but that's just what I'm having to do to show you guys what this is here. But now what I'm going to do is show you how to crochet, I mean how to sew on the um, actual flowers and stuff. So what you need is your darning needle. And I think I'm going to work with the daisy because... Um, this is the biggest and the hardest um, flower to work with that we made out of our projects. So I'm just going to show you. Also, um, I, when I was doing one of my videos, I noticed that I didn't tell you. If you did not want yours to curl, you could lay a book on it, a really heavy book or something heavy on it to get it more flat. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put this daisy, and you can arrange these any way you want. Um, but I'm going to put this right over the top here and I'm kind of, kind of let it hang. Hang over. Okay. Cause I'm going to, like, natural as possible. I'm going to thread my yarn onto my darning needle and I'm going to place the flower where I want it. Okay. And then I'm going to 
And remember, every piece that we did, I asked you to leave a very long piece of yarn on. And that was so that you could do what we're doing right this second. Okay, so I'm going to take my, my needle and I'm going to work into the yarn on the actual um, wreath itself. I'm going to pull up a little bit of that and then I'm going to go into the back of the daisy. And then I'm just going to just going to be pulling through, making sure not to catch my petals there. And I may catch a leaf or something else on there, and that's fine. You're just catching things as you go, and they will just um, make it more stable for the flower. Okay? So as you can see, and then this will just lay there any the way I want it. So I'm just going to sew it on a couple more times to make it secure. Okay? And there will be times when you're sewing where you'll see the little bit underneath. That's okay. Just move it back over. Keep doing what you're doing. And then to, um, to close it off, what I'm going to do is, okay, so just like you're going to sew, like you're sewing, you know, um, hemming some pants or something. So I've got this little loop left. I just put it in the last time. And I'm going to go right through that and knot it off. Okay, then I'm going to go again, right in again, and I'm going to knot it off again by going through that loop and pulling up. And then I may even do it one more time just to make sure that it's extra secure on the wreath itself. Okay, so then I'm going to take my scissors, scissors, and I'm just going to cut off our extra yarn right there. And then this is going to hang just like that. And so then I've attached my daisy up to the top. And we're really close right now because I'm just showing you how to do these. And I will come back again to show you um, how it looks when we're finished. Okay, so I've got all these flowers on the way I want them to be. And yours, and yours look totally different. That's fine. But I just want to show you how to put on the pumpkin. The pumpkin that we did. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to raise up my camera, <laughs> okay, and I'm going to stand my wreath up and I'm going to put it right here, right in the middle of my wreath, sitting right on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way so you can see. But basically, it's just sitting right here on the bottom. So then I'm going to lay it back down again because I have it placed where I want it. And I'm going to take my yarn. And I'm going to do the same thing I did for my daisy. I'm just going to find the end here. And I'm going to work my pumpkin in to the brown yarn on the wreath. And as I'm going, it's going to maybe try to get it's stuck on other things. Just everything out of the way. You can still wrench it back on it. Even if you, move it, no big deal. you don't have to be gentle necessarily. So you just keep threading this through the brown yarn onto your pumpkin until you feel like it's enough and you feel like it's sturdy. See, like right there. Um, I think it needs probably one more time by feeling it, I can tell. So I'm just working that in there. Okay. And now I'm ready to knot off, okay? So I'm just going to go right in to my pumpkin there, and I'm going to pull it up just like that. And go in one more time. And I'm just pulling and knotting okay so then I can cut that off and then I can look and see how it looks so far okay and so right now I can say that I'm really happy with that I like the way that that looks all right so you don't want to fill it in so much that you can't see certain things um, But like that flower right there is turning a little bit and it's fine. So I want to see. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do one more flower. I do want to leave a little portion of my wreath on the side brown. Um, so we may not use every little thing that we made. But that's okay. That leaves you enough to maybe make another wreath. Um, 
But so I'm going to do this last mum here. I'm going to show you how to do this. I just threaded my needle. And I think I want another little spot of color up here at the top, um, right beside my daisy. Okay. So, um, and like I said, this is up to you how you want it to look. And I'm just holding it up and kind of deciding, eh, do I really want to put it there? Do I want to put it over there? You know? Um, so I'm just kind of looking around. I think actually I'm going to put it up here at the top. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take, um, cause you can still see a little of this leaf hanging out. So I'm just going to get my, again, I'm going to move my flower that I've got here out of the way cause I have it positioned where I want it. And I'm just going to work into the leaf that's there but into the brown. So I'm just, I'm just putting this here. Okay. And I'm going to keep going till I get it the way that I want it and that it feels secure enough. Okay. And I think that's enough. It really doesn't take that many times to go through it. Um, it may need one more cause that's a really big flower. So I'm probably just going to go through one more time. And again, I'm just working through, there's a leaf there, so I'm working through the leaf and I'm working through the other brown part. I'm just working through there. Okay. And then I'm just going to knot it off. Okay, just knotting again. I'm going to do it two or three times just to make sure that it's secure. And two. Cut off right there. Okay. And. Let's see here. I have a little piece of yarn left over and you know, it will look a little bit messy, um, at first, but once you get set, everything set where you want it, um, and you think it looks good, then you can just move. Oops. Sorry about that. Then you can just move your, um, your flowers around how you like them. And now I'm going to raise up the camera so that you can see better what we've got going on here. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far. Isn't that so pretty? Look at the pumpkin, the daisies, the mums. There's some leaves in there. I've left a little bit of my wreath showing. Um, and like I said, you can work this. You know, I could bring these down further. I could push them back up. However you like, you can add some more leaves. You can add another sunflower. You could go all the way around. with yours and not leave any space open um or you can leave um even less whatever you want to do that's up to you but uh, that's what it looks like and that's all you have to do you just go around and put things where you want it and we made a beautiful wreath i think it looks great so uh, i hope you guys did the last wreath um i'm buffering sorry about that um but yeah, remember to like, share, and subscribe and say that you've done all three so that you can be entered in the giveaway. Um, and if you haven't been watching along and you've missed out how to make these beautiful flowers, you can find them on Facebook Live or my YouTube channel, um, Custom Comfy Crochet. And um, there we go. So I'm going to take a picture in a little bit. I'm going to hang it on my door and I'm going to take a picture and uh, show you what it really looks like when it's up and done. And I'll put it on um, Facebook. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting.